Hey guys, welcome back to the Sunny Side. I'm Sunny, and these are the weekend horse. These are the weekly horoscopes for the week of March, uh, February um, twenty first, the twenty fifth, two thousand and twenty two. Hey guys, what's up? I hope everyone is having a super amazing day. I'm Sunny. Welcome back to the Sunny Side. Oh, I'm talking like this really quickly because I already did this part of the video already, but I'm doing redoing it because I forgot to show you the chart. <laughs> and so we're gonna do it again. Again, if I get distracted, it's because this video is shot live, I've, and I'm talking to the Sunny Siders right here. Okay, next. Um, there are timestamps in the description. Feel free to fast forward. Please leave comments in the comments section. Let me know what's going on, whether anything happened or didn't happen, whether you think what's going on. Let me know. In addition to that, I am looking for tarot readers and astrologers who want to come on to the show and hang out and talk a little bit. I'll ask you questions about what's your favorite sign and stuff. And we'll have some fun. And so if you want to do that, if you're a tarot reader and astrology, or if you have a YouTube channel or a Twitter thing, uh, then contact me. The, you know, reads with Sunny. Just like my email is there all the time in the description box. All right, what else? There's also a raffle going on in the channel right now. I raffle off free mini astrology readings uh, now. Uh, it took a lot to get to 75,000 subscribers. I really appreciate it. And to give back, I'm giving away free mini readings. Uh, usually the mini readings are given at nighttime uh, when I do the tarot readings and the astrology readings for you guys. And so that's what it is. So to take part in the raffle, all you have to do is leave your name and well, leave your birth information in the comment section. Your birth date, time, if you have it. You don't need your birth time, but if you have it, put it down. And your birth city. And uh, I put everyone who went on the wheel. And we spin the wheel, and um, that's what the day. Uh, that's the deal, and that's what we're giving away. So leave your birth information in the comment section, and uh, we'll add you to the raffle. Is that cool? So we did the raffle. We talked about the raffle, a little bit about what's happening on the channel. We're going to do the overview right now, and then the individual signs. Astrology first, then tarot. Check the timestamps. Check the description box. Please subscribe to the channel. Here we go. All right, so what do you guys want to know? Guys want to know when Russia is going to attack the Ukraine, if Russia is going to attack the Ukraine. And that's a good question because uh, Putin is a Libra. So Libras have a tendency to change their mind at the last minute. It's why it's so difficult uh, to see um, or to know if Putin is actually going to attack or invade or not. Because it's very normal for someone who's a Libra or a lot of Libra energy to be lead everything in one direction and at the very last second to just do something else. Certain signs, Libra, Cancer, you know, sometimes Pisces, some of these signs can really just hit the flake button at the drop and change their mind instantly and just flat out not show up. So it's possible for Libra to do all of this posturing. Remember, Libra's a sign about looking pretty. So Libra's doing all this posturing, looking tough right now. But, but the reality is they might just change their mind and back, back out of the entire situation. And they haven't exactly been overly forthright, forthcoming on what they really want. And, you know, but we'll just see what's going on. Now, as far as I think... I think the first real opportunity to, for uh, Russia to attack is going to be around March 2nd. Now, this is at about 7 a.m. Chicago time on March 2nd. So <clears throat> maybe it's March 1st, March 3rd. But I think what's going to happen is we have Mars and Venus conjuncting Pluto in Capricorn. And Pluto in Capricorn is all about restructuring political boundaries, restructuring institutes changing uh, boundaries, belief systems. It should be, in some cases, it's tearing down walls. In other cases, it's building walls. And it's a very common theme for what we're going through right now. In, and, and that's what we're going through. It's what we have been going through in the last couple of years. And if you want more information, blah, 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 and all this, just check out the live stream that this video came from because I went on and on about this a couple of minutes ago before, I, but without showing the, the chart. Anyways, that's what's going on. So there's a big, powerful change that's happening around March 2nd. Transformation. Because Venus is there, I think it's going to be a very quick victory. 
Venus is going to add beauty and ease and grace to the Pluto transformation, the take it down, the tear down, the restructuring. So I think Russia is going to go in around March 2nd. I think it's going to be very quick, very easy, very fast, easy victory for Russia around March 2nd. In addition, right around that time period, you'll see that we're about to have a new moon. See that? The moon is right behind the sun. So that is the darkest time in the sky at night. So all of the Russian troops will be able to advance in the middle of the night under the cover of darkness, and there'll be less, it's less likely that they will be seen by regular Ukrainian ground forces because it's dark. It's the darkest time of the night. If they, if they were to attack on the full moon, then there's so much light in the sky, you'd see all the soldiers, and you would just, Ukraine would just see all the Russian soldiers. The sky's lit up. But here, under the new moon, or as the, smart, the moon is behind the sun, it's dark at nighttime, so you're not going to see any of the soldiers. So that's when I think a really good time for Russia to attack will be. And I believe, in spite of, and in addition to that, this here, this stellium, this little action here in Capricorn, is absolutely going to stress out Putin's Libra. It's just going to it's just going to completely freak him out. And so um, Putin should be feeling some tension and aggression right now anyways. And this entire time Pluto has been cruising through Capricorn, it has been difficult for Putin and it's going to continue to be difficult for Putin. And that's so that's what I say. I say March 2nd looks like a very very good day for Russia to attack the Ukraine. I think it's going to be fast. I think it's going to they're just going to take it over in like very quickly. Now, if they don't necessarily attack on that particular day, I do believe that there's another day that some a lot of stuff is going to happen, and that's April 5th. On April 5th, we have something very difficult in the sky, and it happens every 2 years, and it's Mars conjunct Saturn. And it's happening in Aquarius. And Saturn in Aquarius is leading towards these lockdowns that we're going through. Yes, Saturn in Capricorn, when it was conjunct Pluto and Jupiter in 2020, that's what heralded, you know, the coronavirus. That's what brought in the um, lockdown. You know, that's what brought in all of that stuff and began to change boundaries around the world, not letting people in from other countries, right? Restricting and changing boundaries in the world, which is what we're talking about with Russia invading the Ukraine. Now, this happened, you know, except so we're talking about the coronavirus changing borders and restricting movement. And now that Saturn has left Aquarius, uh, Capricorn and is hanging out in Aquarius, you're seeing movement restricted. And that's what's going on. You're seeing protests because of movement being restricted. And it's going to continue to be restricted uh, for, you know, for the rest of the year. And then we'll move on from it. We'll just move on. Now, on April 5th, Mars is going to go through a two-year cycle where it conjuncts Saturn. Mars is very aggressive. It's like, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And Saturn is, hey, man, no. And these guys really butt heads. And whatever appears in the chart is going to be indecisive. Uh, in, like, it's... It's not necessarily indecisive, but it's going to uh, create massive conflict. And so right around April 5th, there should be a massive uprising of people. Uh, so just heads up on that. <laughs> so just heads up. And that's the deal, guys. Those are the days. That's what I'm thinking about the Ukraine attacking. Uh, that's what I think about Russia attacking the Ukraine and what's going to happen. And, that, and what's going to happen afterwards? It's that simple. I'll do a run. March 2nd, I think that's the best day for Putin to attack. And I think the world is going to be stunned. Uh, and they're going to be in awe. And I don't think there's going to be any kind of liberation or breakthrough or any kind of resolution of any kind or any kind of awareness or any kind of light. Uh, it's not going to happen until the first week of April. And I'm quite, and that's what I think, guys. That's what I think. So that's what I think. I wish everybody the best. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Please share the video. Please tune in and see if, uh, and see what happened. And let me know in the 
comment section what you guys think. All right, guys, that's the Putin video. Shall we get down to the horoscopes? Oh, my goodness. All right, so let's drop this chart. Let's drop this chart. And now we have the horoscopes for everyone. All right, let's get down to it. Time stamps. <clears throat> Can you guys see it? This week, the moon is going to begin <clears throat> in sexy, sassy, <laughs> not necessarily sassy. Oh, my goodness. Uh, sexy, secretive, and a little bit retributive, Scorpio. It's also going to, so wherever Scorpio, okay, forget it. Let me just read the horoscopes, read what I wrote for you. Here we go, guys, overview. The moon in Scorpio will have everyone feeling secretive, seductive, and probing. You won't settle for superficial answers, and you'll ask the questions to get what you want. Many people will wear a protective shell and quietly work towards their goals. Later in the week, the moon will switch to Sagittarius, and the dark Scorpio mood will be replaced with fun, and if you're lucky, a little frolic. It should be fun by the The first half of the week, people are going to be a little bit moody and brooding, right? The moon is going to make a healthy aspect to the sun and Jupiter, so people are going to be optimistic in a pretty good mood to start the week. In the second half of the week, you guys might get a little bit grouchy as the sun squares the moon in Sagittarius. But moral, but but for the most part, you guys, most people should be feeling sexy, probing. It's a great time to uh, ask questions and to find out what's going on with everything. It's also a very good time to be psychic and obviously a good time to be sexy. But watch out because people will be moody. And uh, like I said, people will be wearing a protective shell, and uh, they'll probably be working quietly towards their goal. All right, next, Mars and Venus, this is the big deal. Mars and one of the big deals. Mars and Venus are, like, this is why Putin is able to get away with everything right now, because Mars has Venus conjuncted. So if Mars was there by itself, everybody would be like, hey, buddy, move your boat. Or like, hey, buddy, like, uh, that's a tank. You want to, like, move it? <laughs> so, or like, you know, you're, like, launching rockets next door. Like, hello? But that's not what's happening. Venus is there. And so Mars is getting away with everything. They're like, uh, buddy, you're like, uh, you know, that's like a border. You know, you guys shouldn't be, like, bombing our people. And they're like, well, it's okay. I didn't, you know, they're just rebel. You know, they're not really our people. I know they have Russian passports, but they're not really, you know, Russians. I know they're like terrorists in your country, but they're not, but there are, they're Russians, so they're not terrorists, right? Even though they're bombing your country. <laughs> and so, whatever. But that's what the Mars Venus thing. And then they're going to, so that's the Mars Venus thing. And that's what's happening. All right. But be careful because this is happening to everybody. You guys do not exist in a separate universe. You know, you're in a universe with everybody. Hold on. So Venus, so let's continue. Mars and Venus are still conjunct and moving towards their destiny with Pluto. Venus will add an acceptable and agreeable tone to the aggression of Mars. You guys got that? Acceptable and agreeable tone to the aggression of Mars. And Mars will inspire you to pursue your Venus themes of love, money, and art. Next, Ukraine prediction. All right. If Russia attacks the Ukraine, I believe it will be on March 2nd, 2022. Obviously, March will be conjunct Venus and Pluto, resulting in a fast and agreeable transition of power, which is Pluto. Right, Pluto's power, fast and agreeable. Venus, Mars, Pluto, fast and agreeable transition of power. It's just before the new moon, so the night sky should be darkest. Good job, Sunny. And that's the action. All right, I made it to the end of the overview. <laughs> so, and that's the action, guys. That's what's going on this week. So be cool. It's going to be a stressful. It's going to be an. We're in for a stressful month of life, and that's just the action with it. And that's just the action. So here we go. Scorpio is going to be fun and sexy, and then with we're going to go through Sagittarius and be fun. And then we have a couple of days where the world is going to 
all hell breaks loose. I'd say we have about 10 days left, and then it's all going to go cuckoo bananas. All right, next, let's do the general over the tarot for everyone. Let's get the Aries set up, and then we'll do the overview for everyone. All right, Priestess says the moon card. Here we go. Bam! Tower reversed. I got, I feel like you don't just spend five minutes talking about, you know, 20 minutes talking about war and not pull a card like the tower. I probably should have guessed this one. The tower reversed, guys. It looks like there's going to be a fight coming up and something is going to come crashing down. So be careful. So be careful. The tower reversed. You guys know what this card means. So the tower is Mars energy. Obviously, the Hebrew glyph is mouth. It means... It means you're gonna like you're gonna change your mind. Something's gonna come crashing down. Everybody be cool. Then we have the page of swords. People are not learning their lessons right now. Whatever is happening, we are all part of it. You know, I'm part of this world as well. Page of swords reverse. It's all about learning your lessons. It's learning how you can talk to people, learning how you can relate to people, learning your communication game. But this thing is reversed. People are not learning. Their communication lessons right now, they might be a little childish in their words. People are probably childish in their words, childish in your thinking, in their thinking, and you will have no choice but to tower their, tower their ass and not give them a good, like, reality check. And finally, the Five of Wands. Here we go. Priestess says the Death Card. Bianca says the Wheel of Fortune. Finally, the Five of Wands. It looks like everybody's doing their own. It's reversed too. So it does appear as if everybody's just doing their own thing. It's a little bit chaotic. They might be fighting right now. There's a lot of stepping on toes. So everybody be cool. There's a lot of stepping on toes. Five of wands. It looks like an ending. It looks like an ending or a crashing or something is going to come down. There's a bit of an inevitability about this ending that's happening for people or this crash down happening for people. And it is uh, going to be a result of people not teaming up, and they will be stuck doing their own thing. They didn't learn their lessons, and the Five of Wands is reversed. They're stuck doing their own thing. So it's going to be a pretty interesting week. Expect change this week. All right, next. All right, Aries, here we go. Aries Weekly Horoscope. Here we go. Venus conjunct Mars in Capricorn. You guys got that, Aries? Venus conjunct Mars in Capricorn. We'll be talking about this for a lot of people. It fills your public life with love, adoration, and the right amount of push to reach for your dreams. Got that? Aries, Venus conjunct Mars in Capricorn fills your public life with love, adoration, and the right amount of push to reach for your dream. The moon in Scorpio. Obviously, Aries, you know that makes you loosen the zipper, right? All right, the moon in Scorpio has you overflowing with sexy intent and a slight lust for power. Now, Pluto also hanging out in the 10th house indicates a major change coming at the office. So Aries, this, um, this, I, I get the, one sec, Aries, What's going on in here is you have a major change coming at the office in the next couple of weeks. Maybe uh, the first week of March, your company might shut down or you're going to have to go back to work or you're going to get a new job. But something very public, very high visibility is going to absolutely change your life. So be prepared for it. You should be prepared right now. You should be looking for new jobs or spending extra hours at the office. It's possible, it's possible that Aries... Uh, started an office romance or they're putting extra hours in the office or they're flirting with someone or someone has a crush on them and that's where it is it, but it's very high you're very high visibility right now you can't really hide Aries and uh, there's love waiting for you out in the world but there's a possibility your company is going to be restructured very big possibility on top of that next month you might go through a situation where your friends and your social network are going to uh, increase in importance for you. So Aries, watch out for losing your job in the next two weeks. And in the month of March, uh, watch for you to have to connect with a whole bunch of friends. Uh, net social networking is going to get very important. 
In the meantime, you might want to stay a little bit chilled out behind the scenes and just figure out what's going on in your neighborhood or around the scenes or something going on with you. You might want to take a mental health day. But at the same time, with the moon traveling through Scorpio, you're going to be focused on your money, fixated on your money, fixated on other people's possessions, and you're going to be loose in the zipper. So get out there, have fun, and uh, don't do anything uh, that a cream hasn't been created for yet. Next, Aries, here we go. Tarot. You're off to court? What's that? No mountain is high enough. No mountain is high enough. Actually, I know a lot. There are a lot of mountains that are high enough. <laughs> Depends what you want to do. All right, next. Aries. Hey, Aries, the star card. So whatever you're doing, there's hope. The star is a light in the distance. It's a card of hope. It means it's the first step, you know. But the thing is, the light is not coming from out like it is. It's the star. But in this particular thing, you are the star. Uh, it indicates that you survived something right now. You survived the crashing of the tower, and it's time to rebuild. But it's not rebuilding in a very practical kind of down-to-earth way. It's not what Aquarius is about. It's not rebuilding. This is not an earth card. This is an air card. It's going to come from within. And so it's time for you, Aries, to get out there and share your knowledge with the people around you and to listen to other people's stories so that you can rebuild yourself. And then we have the Knight of Cups. Aries, you might be rushing around for love. You might be a little bit hormonal. You might be, you know, you might be chasing skirts right now. You might be chasing, you know, you might be chasing skirts right now. Knight of Cups. There is a possibility that love is going to arrive from a distance. But I have a feeling, Aries, you probably... You're infatuated with something right now. The Knight of Cups. It's kind of like falling in love. Like it's having a daydream or being attracted to something ethereal that with nothing really based in reality. It's falling in love and rushing around for people. So Aries, watch out that you don't get uh, dragged around town by something that hangs out in your pants. Like your trouser snake or your wallet. So watch out, Aries. And then finally, there you go, Sunny. Ten of Wands. So Aries, Ten of Wands is a card of carrying a burden for someone else. So whatever the situation is, I think you're getting played. Seriously, I think you're getting played. Look at this. You're See, she's carrying a burden of all these wands. She's carrying all these sticks. Maybe, Aries, you're forced to do it alone. Maybe you're doing it for somebody else. But I, I have a feeling, are any of these cards reversed? No. So I think, Aries, you're doing it. You're not necessarily getting the recognition for it. I think somebody's using you. Anyways, that's what I think in this reading right here. Aries, Aries rising. I think people are using you. And I think you've fallen in love with someone who might be slightly abusive. So just watch out for it. And stay cool. Right? Astrologically, you're very high visibility. Strong possibility for an office romance. And that's the action, Aries. Please share the video. And please subscribe to the channel. And please enter the draw. If you want to enter the draw, all you have to do is leave your birthday in the description box and please share the video we're still still trying to do a a, a membership drive here or a subscribe subscriber drive please share the videos all right taurus is up all right taurus is up <clears throat> all right taurus taurus weekly horoscope dear taurus taurus Mars, Venus, and Pluto are all, Mars, Venus, and Pluto all coming together in Capricorn has you wanting to explore your horizons and expand your limits. See, it's all going on here in the 11th house. Not a big deal. Again, so you should be, Taurus should be exploring their horizons and expanding their limits, especially their mental limits. Anyways, your thinking and perspective on life in general is going through a dramatic change that will ultimately affect your identity and life path. It's time, Taurus, to reach beyond your imagination. So, Taurus, it's a very philosophical time. You might be fighting with other people about ideas, ideas and beliefs, 
it could be simple things like what abortion, freedom, like those aren't very simple things, but like they're kind of, you know, like, you know, or your ideas, your values, your opinions, like maybe money, maybe business ideas. Uh, you might want to travel right now. Taurus very much might want to travel. Um, or Taurus might be falling in love with people from a different culture, falling in love with people at a distance. Mars is there doing all this stuff. But know in advance, Taurus, that in two weeks, right, the first week of March, Mars and Venus are going to conjunct Pluto and Capricorn. And you're going to have a major shift in the way you see the world major and so and the, you're going to shift your position in the world how you think of things how you think of different cultures how you visit the you know your desire to move overseas uh maybe you, you will be you might be overcome with an um a desire to go back to school you know as venus approaches pluto people are going to become obsessed with ideas i'm going to write about this session in the next horoscope every horoscope i add a little bit of mars venus to you guys a little bit of Mars, Venus, Pluto, and this is what today is. But Taurus, you might become obsessed with someone from a distance or from a different culture, or they might become obsessed with you. And you're going to have a strong desire to travel in the next two weeks. After that, you're going to want to be high visibility. The other thing, the other way to look at this, when I look at this, oops, when I look at it, I do look at, I look at studying and then going out and getting a job. And that's the deal, Taurus. <clears throat> it's time to expand your horizons, get out there and see what the world can do. Way over here, you should be dramatically um, expanding your social network. And you should be very, very popular with groups of people right now. And that's the action, Taurus. That kind of stuff should all resonate well with you. And good luck. Get out there and get them. On top of that, <clears throat> obviously... The South Node is going to dissolve your relationships. It's going to dissolve and in Scorpio restructure your relationships in the next year. Expect endings, obviously. And get out and have some fun. All right, next. See your cards, Taurus. Let's see what's going on. You can't hide anything from me. Sonny knows all about the bulls. Sonny, brother. Son, this is yeah, yeah. All right, whatever. Here we go. Taurus, here we go. Da -na -na -na. Seven of Swords reverse. So Taurus, someone is trying to pull a fast one on you. They are lying. Someone's lying about you. Someone's trying to steal your stuff in the background. This card's actually about someone stealing your stuff and saying, but it's a it's swords. So they might be spreading lies about you behind your back as well. But in essence, the card's about stealing your stuff. And in the background, watch out. So someone is, uh, I mean, reverse, not in the background. So reverse, Taurus, someone is definitely thinking about stealing your stuff. And um, I don't know. They're planning it. It's a little, you know, you might not see it happening. So watch out. Then we have the Four of Cups reversed. You're a bit in daydream mode. You might be locked or stuck in this Four of Cups daydream mode without a way to make it happen. You might be having fun right now. I don't know if you're having fun or if you're stressed out or if it's just regular day-to-day -day stuff. But the Four of Cups is usually daydreaming about a brighter future. Unfortunately, it's reversed. So maybe someone's stealing from you or someone's spreading misinformation about you or there's some kind of nonsense happening. But nevertheless, the Four of Cups says, you know, you're, you might be a little upset. You know, you're stuck in this daydream and you're wondering how to snap out of it and get back to reality. Oh, well, here we go. Ten of Swords Reverse. This is probably the worst card in the deck. It means, Taurus, you have to watch out. Someone is planning something against you. And there's a strong possibility that you're not going to see it. And it's going to be painful. And they're going to stab you in the back. And there's going to be a problem. And we haven't even got to Monday yet. So good luck, Taurus. Stay out of trouble. I'm here for you. We'll be having readings at nighttime. If you have any problems, let me know. Well, let me know at nighttime, right? And um, good luck, Taurus. I wish you guys the absolute best. Just be very careful. Someone's pulling a fast one on you, and you, you might lose this fight. All right, next. Also reminding all signs to leave your birth date in the description box, in the comment section, because we have a raffle coming up. 
It's a free raffle for mini astrology readings. I'm also doing past life readings for you guys now. Uh, for those who are interested in past life astrology, which if you want to know what you were like in a past life or you want to know what kind of drama you're bringing into this life, I will gladly tell you guys. And that's um, that we're doing in the evening now. So if you want to be part of the raffle, just leave your birth information in the comments section. And if you want a personal reading, hit the PayPal link in the description box. Obviously, share the video, right? I'm doing all, I'm, the, I'm giving away, you know, we're doing it so that we can have a, you know, grow the subscribers on the channel, right? So please grow the subscribers. Please, everyone hit the like button, do your thing. All right, you guys ready? Gemini is up next. Gemini weekly horoscope. Dear Gemini, this one starts off with the moon in Scorpio. Oops, start the clock. Here we go. Gemini, the moon, dear Gemini, the moon in Scorpio has Gemini focused on habits and work. Habits and work, Gemini. It's a good time to take care of the details and focus on what has to be done. One sec. Typos, right? It's a good time to take care of the details and focus on what has to be done. This is all about details and focusing on things. There's a strong... Okay, let me finish this up. Um, Venus and Mars conjunct in your eighth house. Way over here, Scorpio, uh, Gemini. Venus and Mars conjunct in your eighth house indicates shared resources are going through a painful cycle. But together... You'll survive the financial drain. Gemini, Venus, Mars, uh, conjunct in the eighth house indicates joint shared resources are very difficult. You're paying for other people. Other people are paying for you. It will clear out, stick together because Venus and Mars are both there. Um, together, you'll survive the financial drain. Be grateful for your partner's contribution. Definitely, Gem be grateful for your partner's contribution. The sun entering Pisces will want... Uh, will have you wanting to push the publicity button. You guys see that? The sun entering Pisces for Gemini or the sun entering in the 10th house along with Jupiter, right? The sun is going to highlight Jupiter in your 10th house, Gemini. You're about to become very popular. There's a good chance that you're going to get a new job, good chance that you're going to be very popular. So you should be very high visibility, Everyone should see you. I don't know that good things are going to happen to you while you're out in the public, but everybody's going to see you, so dress your best. On top of all of that, on top of all of that, uh, I have to warn Geminis that they are attracting death right now. Geminis, Gemini rising specifically, you are attacking death. You're, and so the first week of March... Watch out for all hell to break loose in your eighth house. In the eighth house is shared resources, uh, parts of your sexuality. It's, um, it's shared resources, money that you share with other people. It's an inheritance. And it's also the karma, or it's also paying or receiving money from lawsuits. So good luck, Gemini. Gemini rises. I'll say it again. You're, attack you're attracting death. For the next month and a half so watch out for that uh, you're going through a financial restructuring uh, it's a very good time to apply for a new job and definitely work your habits you see this the moon is going to cross the south node right here and the south node is cruising in this direction so very very good time for gemini's to work on their habits all right next now it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to all work out because Gemini and the South Node don't always get along. So, but like, whatever, 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 whatever. I mean, sorry, the Moon and the South Node don't always get along. All right, that's the deal for Gemini. Good luck. I wish you the absolute best of luck. Something sudden and unexpected is going to happen later on this year behind the scenes. That's it's going to really throw you for a loop. So watch out for it. Excuse me. All right, Gemini next. Oh, Gemini's up. Here we go, Gemini. Hey, ten of coins for better or worse. Well, there you go. This is a card of money. It's also a card of inheriting money. It's legacy money. So there you go, Gemini. Gemini's might inherit some money. They might have a legacy. They might 
win a legal battle. Gemini's, Gemini Risings might win a legal battle. They have money should be coming your way. Legacy money. Uh, you might tax return. Anyways, this lines up with the horoscope, so you guys should be okay. Okay, next. Then we have the Four of Wands reversed. In spite of this financial windfall coming your way, the Four of Wands says you're not going to be able to get on with it. It's reversed. You should be getting on. There should be some happily ever after happening. But even in spite of all this money, I expect it, I actually expect this to be a fairly bittersweet time for Geminis. And with this Four of Wands reversed, I think even though you're going to have all the money in the world, I think you're going to be absolutely stuck and unable to, to do what you have to do. There's also a possibility, Geminis, you're going to lose something or someone. Then we have the Ace of Cups. This is actually a good card. This means you're going to have some kind of new beginning in your emotional state. Now, keep in mind that new beginning might uh, come about as an ending, as a result of an ending in a different emotional state. But just let's be optimistic right now and say, Gemini's, you know, money should be really good. You might have a lot of money coming to you right now, like some investments have matured. Uh, but you're kind of stuck. Even though you have the money, you still can't do what you want to do. And the Ace of Cups says to hang tight because you really should be feeling better about a lot of things. And if you have a fresh mood come over you, you should go with, go with the fresh mood. And, you know, just be super cool. Um, and that's the action. Enter into the raffle if you want a, a draw to see if you get a mini astrology reading here on the channel. If you want to get a past life reading or a compatibility reading, you're going to have to stick around, you know, tune in at one of the night times. Uh, one of the nighttime live streams. All right, here we go next. Cancer, weekly horoscope. Dear Cancer, crab love. The moon in Scorpio. This is known as the, that's the ooh-la-la -la moon or the boom chick. Whatever, the boom chicka wah wah moon for. Yeah, I can't spell chick. C H I C K? Oh, look at that. Yeah. The American spelling, let me know. Here we go. Cancer, the moon in Scorpio will put you in a playful, creative, and romantic, that's fifth house, romantic mood. Here we go. And that means for Cancer, you'll probably be in full. On stalking mode. You got that, Cancer? Uh-huh. And you'll love every sneaky second of it. Also note that the moon in Gemini and um, Aquarius. What? There's no moon in Gemini? What am I thinking? <laughs> the moon in Scorpio. What's going on in Gemini? Oh, uh, there's obviously a miss, a miss, um, a miss writing here. I wrote something that. So what does it say here? So what did it say about cancer? Also note the moon, uh, it's actually in Scorpio, will also bring out your inner detective. Oh, well, there we go. Let me change this right here because so the moon's in Scorpio down here, but all this stuff is, you know, kicking around in your eighth house. This should bring around cancer. You should be very uh, in detective mode. Uh, it should, all of this stuff, the moon in Scorpio should bring out your inner detective, but you should be very romantic and very playful. Now, here we go. Here's the stuff you don't want to know. The real thing, and it's what we've been talking about all this time. The conjunction of Venus, Mars, and Pluto cancers uh, foreshadow a major shift in your relationship status. That's the action, Krabs. For better or worse, something is going to restructure your relationship status. And that's it. It's going to be painless, right? Because like I said earlier, as I was talking about the Ukraine, the Russians are going to go in and it's going to be seamless and it's going to be painless. They're just going to take over everything. Is that kind of thing, that kind of scene is what's going to happen for cancers in the relationship. There's a, there's a change coming. It's been painful. It's happening again. Think back to something that might have been happening two years ago. Did you go through something two years ago? You're probably going to go through it again. Was there a big change in your life and your relationship two years ago? 
you're going to go through it again. All right, next, on top of all that cancer, shared resources continue to suck. They're going to suck for the rest of the year. But after that, it's going to be okay. Like, look, there's nothing going down here, right? So, like, what I'm trying to say is wait for this stuff to clear out. Like, Venus and Mars have to clear out. But once things clear out, you're going to be okay. So just tough out the entire joint finances thing. Don't worry about it. In the meantime, get very playful, get very creative, and put a lot of energy and put the energy, believe it or not, into your relationships. You're going to find that as the south node cruises through Scorpio for the rest of the year, Cancer, it's going to dissolve and change. And it's going to cause problems in uh, children, obviously, but it's also going to cause problems in your romantic life. The south node, you're going to take, you probably, have, you have to watch out for taking relationships and taking uh, your love life for granted because the south node will dissolve it, cause a problem, and that's just what's going to happen. So be careful. So be careful, Cancer. So once again, it's relationship time. There's a strong, you know, you might want to travel or go back to school. Um, and that's the deal. Before we leave, in the next uh, two months, Something sudden and unexpected uh, is going to happen with you and your social network. Something big, unexpected, and it's going to really affect your future. So be careful that it's positive, not negative. All right, there you go. All right, and there you go, crabs. Cancer, let's go look at your cards. First up, Ten of Cups reversed. This is the happily ever after card. And it's one of the happily ever after cards, but it's reversed. The Ten of Cups is like everything, right? It's marriage, it's the family, it's the home, it's the dog. It's all that stuff you go looking for. Look, there's a rainbow here and everything. However, this card is reversed. So you, although you're supposed to have this happily ever after cancer, there is a fly in the ointment. So be careful. Maybe there's a delay in your happily ever after. Maybe your family structure is going to be restructured. So watch out for it. Something, and you're attracting death. So be careful. Or you will be attracting death. Geminis are attracting death. Cancers will be attracting death. But you have the wheel card. The wheel card is the luckiest card in the deck. It is the card of divination. So Cancer, when you get the wheel card, maybe you should take a chance. Well, the moon is in the moon is in the fifth house of gambling. So Cancer, maybe it's a very good time for you to take a chance. Maybe a good time for you to buy a lottery ticket this week. Uh, very, It's a very good time for you to take a chance. Just be careful because the Ten of Cups reversed indicates you're probably going to step on some family toes as you do whatever you do. But like the Wheel of Fortune, Cancer, go buy some lottery tickets. Plus, Jupiter's in Pisces. Cancer, you should very, very, very much buy lottery tickets right now. Very much. Then we have the Six of Cups right side up so that means keep things simple cancer try not to stress it out uh you're going to be contacted from possibly by a childhood friend or someone you've known from a long time ago or when you thought you were young right six of cups is the card of children so keep your eyes open uh for people from the past keep your eyes open for you know just keep things simple cancer you're really lucky right now and there's a lot of big change coming in your life in the next couple of weeks so six of cups keep it simple keep it simple keep it simple and i wish you the best when you guys are ready for a personal reading hit the paypal link in the description box below if you want to enter into the raffle leave your birth information in the in the comment section all right leo is up next leo you are up Leo Weekly Horoscope. Dear Leo, and we're talking about this right now. Dear Leo, Venus conjunct Mars in Capricorn is shaking up your routine, right? It's all in the sixth house, Leo. Leo, absolutely watch your health. You might find out in the next two weeks that you're actually really sick and you didn't know it. Leo's watch out for major health problems. Uh, you also might be attracted to a little bit of death, Leo. But moreover, there's probably more likely that Leos are about to come into, Leo and Leo Risings are about to come into a very, very big chunk of money. I would imagine Leos might be getting new jobs. 
Leo Risings, Leo, Leo Risings might be getting new jobs, put a lot of energy into work. Something sudden and unexpected is going to happen on the job front in the next couple of months. So keep your wits about you, Leo. Like a sudden and unexpected dream, sudden and unexpected professional dream might happen, but you obviously have to put in the hard work and do it. Uh, right now, watch your health. Watch the health of your pets. They might be getting sick. And obviously for Leo with Saturn in the seventh house, your relationships are on the outs. Strong possibility Leo's getting divorced or breaking up in relationships or getting ready to marry or date older people. Just letting you know. Or people different age from you with the Saturn there. All right, next. With Pluto also in your sixth house, you can expect a big change in your daily life. Personal health, right? Leo, watch for injuries and job. Keep your eyes open and be prepared to say yes to a golden opportunity. Golden opportunity is on the horizon, Leo. Jupiter in Pisces indicates that you'll have a good chance to win the legal battles of 2022. Leo rising, Jupiter in Pisces has a very strong possibility to inherit money and win legal battles. All right, next, Leo. Good luck. All right, it's also a good time to invest money. All right, Leo, here we go. Yeah, Jill Angel is going to be good. Hey, M. Smith, right on. Right on. Here we go, Leo. Queen of Coins, it is money time, Leo. Be cautious with your money. It's actually, Leo, you should be making some money right now. Work hard, work hard, work hard. I, sorry, this is the wrong card. I think you have, I think some money is going to be pretty good. Queen of Coins, this is nurturing your finances. Uh, it's, it's nurturing your finances. It's taking care of people. It's lending money to people. It's shared, shared resources. Money should be good, Leo. So get out there and, you know, don't spend what you don't have. Uh, but at the same time, you're going through a change in life where I think money's going to get pretty good. Then you have the four of wands reversed. So whatever's going on, although you're supposed to be able to move forward, once again, you might be stuck right now. Or you thought you would be able to move forward and get on with things with someone else. Uh, but it's whatever it is, it's not working out. You're not technically stuck like the three of wands would, you know, say waiting. You're in a waiting period. It looks like it's time to move on, Leo, but you're going to be moving on either separately or you're going to be moving on, four of wands, moving on in a way you didn't expect. So just be careful. Oh, shucks. And then finally, the ten of wands. Wow, Leo, you're probably doing too much for someone um, and they're taking advantage of you. Ten of wands. Look at this. It's right set up. You're, it's ten of wands. You're doing too much for someone. You're carrying the burden. You're doing everything. Whoops. It looks, Leo, as if you're doing, whoops, wrong, it looks, Leo, as if you're doing everything and, uh, and no one's no one's there to help you, you know, and there's nothing you can do about it. You're stuck doing all the work, so you're going to have to make some decisions about it. You're stuck doing all the work and you can't get on with things, and you should. You're a Leo. You're awesome. So, Leo, go be awesome and, you know, you get ready, you know, get ready to, to go do your thing. All right, next, ten of wands. You're definitely doing too much for someone else. Four of wands. You you can't you reversed. You can't get on. You can't get on with things. All right, next. I wish you the best, Leo. You know, good luck with everything. All right, Varag is up next. Check it out. I drew Varag. He's got a mustache. He has a mustache and a hat. All right, and that's not his belly button. He's wearing a belt. So, because Virgos wear belts. All right, next. Varuga, 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 Varug. Varug, weekly horoscope. Dear Virgo, Mars conjunct Venus and Pluto in Capricorn indicates a big change coming in your love life. All right, Virgo, hold on. There's also a strong possibility of pregnancy right now. 
Saturn in the sixth house indicates a great time to set long-term goals and stick to them. All right, so Virgo, let's take it all with a grain of salt and slow it down a little bit. Things were tough the last couple of years. I know I get it, especially in relationships. But also, and very recently, things have finally sorted themselves out in your love life and probably your career as well. So things are probably finally going pretty good for the old Virog there. So, but big caution. There is, this is going to highlight a change in about a week or so, or the first week of March. A big change, Virgo, is coming to your romantic life and your creative life. Yeah, you might get pregnant. Virgo, very, very strong possibility you're going to get pregnant, so watch out for it. Very strong possibility you might have a miscarriage or an accidental pregnancy as well. So, Or you're going to, might have to have an, you know, an aborted pregnancy, right? Chiron is over here in the eighth house. So you're going to have to, Virgo, you're going to have to keep your wits about you, especially in your love life. There is a possibility that you're going to start, finally start a big creative project that you've always wanted to start. But I think, Virgo, watch out. I think a big change coming, you might get pregnant. Uh, there's also a possibility, Virgos are, strong possibility, Virgos are getting either divorced or married this year. Uh, stronger possibility that Virgos are going to get married. Just like me, I think Virgos getting pregnant and married. Uh, on top of all of that, obviously with Saturn in the sixth house, Virgo, get back to the gym. Work your thing day to day, day to day, day to day, day to day. That should be the action with Virgo. And finally, sometime in the next month or two, you might unexpectedly go back to school, or you might get a sudden and unexpected opportunity to travel. There you go, Virago. I hope it all works out for you. Did I write anything out down? No. It's with Saturn in the sixth house indicates a great time to set long-term goals and to uh, stick to them. All right, next. Oh, you know a, a baby-making machine Virgo? <laughs> That's really cute. <laughs> all right, Virgo, here we go. Well, Virgo's just going. They're almost out of it. But, like, let them, you know, they've got a couple of weeks left of having fun. Oh, crap. Ten of Swords reversed. Oh, my goodness. Am I only sh reading like four cards tonight? Oh, man. Ten of Swords reversed. So, Virgo, some really, really bad news is coming your way. Now, keep in mind the tarot readings are just for the week, right? This is the weekly horoscopes. And for the astrology transits, I tell you, I tell you when it's going to happen. But right now, Virgo, you have the Ten of Swords reversed. Somebody is absolutely going to stab you in the back. So either put on your fluffy coat or get ready to take a um, an express on the stabbing train. Oh, my God, Virgo, get ready. Someone is going to come and really mess you up sideways this week. Oh, my goodness, Virgo, ten of wands. Oh, no, Virgo, something really negative is going to happen. Oh, yo, yo, ten of swords, ten of wands, doing too much for other people complaining about things. Oh, no, Virgo, you already complain about things. Oh, no, come on. Like, you do. Even if you say you don't, you do. That's like saying, I'm not, you know, I don't hold a grudge. Even when I don't, I do. I'm a Scorpio. And so, Virgo, this looks really bad. Be careful. The only thing that could make it worse would be, like, the tower or, like, maybe the death card or something like that. Or like the Five of Swords. I don't know. What's going to make it worse? Oh, da -na -na -na, the Page of Wands. I was a little nervous. Guys, I got to confess, I was a little nervous pulling this last card. But the Page of Wands reversed. Someone's being very immature, Virgo. And they're not learning their lessons. Watch out. Someone is being immature. They're daydreaming. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're probably goofing off. It's like someone at work. Right? Like someone is new at work. It's wands, right? It's like someone new at the office keeps screwing things up. That's like what the page of wands reversed is. They're not learning their lessons. Um, or they're act behaving a little uh, immature. But right now you're doing too much for someone and someone is absolutely out to stab you in the back. So be careful, Virgo. And I wish you the absolute best. Dear Libra. Libra Weekly Horoscope. Here we go. So 
around this time in the horoscopes, I started shifting the writing around. I started writing around different things because different signs relate to what the energy is happening differently. And so we, we point at different things. All right, Libra, with this moon and south node, both in Scorpio, with the moon and south node, both in Scorpio, very short transit, right? Moon crossing the south node, but the south node is going to remain there for another year and a half. So here we go. Okay, Libra, with the moon and south node, both in Scorpio, you'll be focused on making money. For the next year, your finances will come under the microscope. Uranus in the eighth house, right? Uranus in the eighth house. It's, this entire axis is going to be lit this year. So Uranus in the eighth house continues to shake up investments and your sex life. It's for Libra. Venus and Mars in your fourth house has you continuing renovations at home. No big deal. So here we go. So Libra, you're continuing. So first up, for the rest of the year, money, right? Your joint finance, your personal money is going to get a little, should be really good. But at the same time, you might spend a lot. It's the south node. There might be an overemphasis on you making money. But at the same time, you're going to have an unexpected opportunity to really excel in joint finances. Like you, someone might suddenly pay for you to do something or you might suddenly pay for someone else to do something so it's pretty cool like that it's pretty cool it's, it's pretty good um your libra's also get get have a sudden and unexpected opportunity um to like just uh meet someone romantically you know so it doesn't like libra's love life is going to be messed up for the next uh for the rest of the year until saturn clears out and Saturn's not clearing out anytime soon. So children are sick for Libra, love life kind of sick, but it sucks. But at the same time, you have a big destiny that's going to unexpectedly fall into your lap with regards to your sex life, with regards to uncovering secrets, and with massive regard to joint finances. So Libra, do your Libra thing and absolutely partner up because that's where your success is going to come from this year. And it's going to be unexpected. On top of all of that, right now, for the next couple of weeks, something, Libras are going to go through a very, very big change and a very big permanent change at home, big restructuring at home. If you guys don't know, Putin is a Libra. The president of Russia is a Libra. And it sounds very, very much like he is going to have a big restructuring at home. Got it, Libra? It's going to check your game for uh, another couple of weeks. And that's the action. And that's the action. Having said all of that, Saturn in the fifth house, watch out for kids being sick. Watch out for romantic partners causing problems. And that's the action, uh, Libra. Be cool. Watch your money. Next. On top of all of that, just reminding everybody, we have a raffle right now. Uh, when we, when I, uh, I'm giving away, um, I'm giving away little mini astrology readings. Uh, I do them at, at nighttime on the channel. I read tarot for you guys and I give away and I do mini astrology readings. Uh, right now I'm also doing past life readings for you guys, past life astrology readings and compatibility readings as well. If you want to do know more, just look in the description box or, or tune into one of the live streams in the evening. But saying all of this, we reached 75,000 subs and giving back. And, you know, there's a raffle for a free mini reading. And if you want to be entered in the raffle, all you have to do is leave your birth date, time, and city in the comment section. It would be nice if you also shared the videos, but just leave your information in the comment section for now. Libra, Queen of Wands, you're going to have to be very nurturing with your actions. Maybe you're going to start training somebody in something. Maybe you're going to become a tutor. Maybe you're going to become a personal trainer. Maybe you're just going to have to, maybe you're going to become, it's not like a nurse. It's more inspirational and fiery. So maybe you're going to lead the carpool. You're going to lead the PTA. You're going to set something up. But you're physically going to do something to reach out and start taking care of other people. Then we have the Nine of Cups. This is the luckiest card in the deck. 
The Nine of Cups indicates that you get to make a wish. And on the sunny side, when the Nine of Cups comes up, everybody gets to make a wish. So let's do it, guys. Let's make a wish. Libra, you get to make a wish. All right. So, Sunny, did you make a wish? Oh, yeah. I absolutely wish for the Sunny Siders. I wish one of you guys wins the Powerball, like wins five, six hundred million dollars in the lottery and like pieces out old man Sunny over here a little bit and says, hey, Sunny, Sunny thanks for uh, the timing of buying that lottery ticket. Like, thanks, man. I'm doing it for free. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. that's my wish. I, mean, I wish that one of you guys win a lot of money in the lottery. And remember Sunny. All right, next. <laughs> I don't think that's that complicated. Anyways, good things for Libra. Oh, Libra, you got to watch out for your kids. The Empress reversed. Empress is starting something new. Empress is Venus energy. It's kind of the card of pregnancy, Libra. And this card is reversed. So maybe you fell in love with someone or you tried to partner up with someone or you're going to start something with someone like a life or, a, or something, a life or a project or a pregnancy or something. But this card is reversed, Libra. So your love game, or, and it's not necessarily your love game, but it's your birthing of a project game. Whether you're birthing a relationship or birthing a project or you're birthing whatever, there's going to be a delay. The Empress is not going to be as, as loving as it should be. Uh, you would expect mixed information, mixed messages, crossed information, Libra. It should be very loving, but it's not. There's a fly in the ointment. Uh, or maybe something didn't quite work out at one time, Libra, for some reason. And maybe the wish and your action is going to bring that thing that didn't necessarily work out. Maybe somebody was a little, didn't work out. Uh, maybe you're going to go back and check that out and clean up the Empress action. Anyways, whatever it is, it's a very soft and nurturing type, soft and nurturing type of love. So it might look a little screwy, but you guys should really be there for each other right now. Like do make an extra effort to be there for each other and Libra absolutely buy a lottery ticket. All right, next. All right, Scorpio Weekly Horoscope. Dear Scorpio, oh my God. SLC, I'll tell you something about Scorpio. SLC, you know, the beautiful and creative and talented SLC said, took one look at this chart and she said, um, she immediately said, good luck, someone's getting pregnant this year. So Scorpio, according to SLC, watch out. There's a strong possibility Scorpios are getting pregnant this year. Very, very strong possibility for Scorpios to get pregnant. Also, Scorpio is a very creative time for you. You should be extremely creative. Like if you're a YouTuber, Scorpio, you should make in videos like crazy right now. Nonstop videos, Scorpio. If you're like a musician, you nonstop writing. It's a very creative time for Scorpio. And it would behoove you not to waste it. Just saying. Uh, Scorpios are also very romantic and probably going to get pregnant. But... Some massive amount of shakeup in an unexpected way is going to happen with Scorpio and their relationships in the next little while. Massive, unexpected shakeup is going to happen with Scorpio. Sunny's horoscope. Dear Scorpio, Mars and Venus conjunct Pluto will bring a big change in the relationship between your brothers and sisters. Right here is actually what we're talking about uh, today. And for Scorpios, it's going to affect the relationship with their brothers and sisters. Now, although good news is likely, be prepared for game-changing and life-changing news. Uranus conjunct uh, to the North Node, right? Uranus right there conjuncting the North Node uh, on its way to conjunct the North Node. You guys knew I use really tight orbs here in, this, in the sunny side astrology because, like, I'm always doing horoscopes, and I think tight nodes are the key to accuracy. Anyways, Uranus conjunct the North Node puts you on a crash course with your relationship destiny, Scorpio. So prepare for butterflies to strike from out of the blue. Scorpio, prepare for butterflies to strike from out of the blue. Mars and Venus will conjunct Saturn in a couple of months. Ay, 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 it just gets worse. 
So first, Scorpio, a big change with your brothers and sisters. Scorpios, watch out for motorcycle accidents. Watch out for car problems. Watch out for getting a new car. Someone might give you a car, Scorpio, just letting you know. And then after that, big problems at home. Big, big, big problems at home. Mars and Venus will conjunct Saturn and Cups, indicate, will conjunct Saturn, indicating a shakeup or a change in your living situation and or your parents. Got that, Scorpio? I got that. I heard that loud and clear. Scorpio. Oh, my God, the death card straight up. So that's change, Scorpio. Change is coming your way. Whatever is happening, you're going to be like, F this, man. I cannot take it anymore. Whether uh, uh, you're just going to make the change. You have to get on board with your own life. It's that simple. Why does everybody fight this? Scorpio, you've outgrown something. You have to leave it in the past and you have to move forward. It's that simple. It could be something as simple as like sugar in your coffee, but that's what's going on. Then the page of swords reversed. Try not to yell and scream and bite and pinch and act immature and argue with everybody as you're going through whatever nonsense you're going through, Scorpio. With the page of swords reversed, someone is being quite immature. They're not listening. They're not, they're not listening. They're not speaking as an adult. They're not thinking straight. They're being childish. They're not learning their lessons and they're probably acting out. And it would it's a good idea for Scorpio to just mess them up a little bit. <laughs> and then finally, the Queen of Swords. So you can't mess them up, Scorpio. <laughs> the Queen of Swords says you have to watch your words and you're actually going to have to take care of some of these guys. So as much as you want a page of swords, as much as you want to freak out with on everybody, Scorpio, you actually have to watch your words, take it easy, and you're going to have to take a chance on yourself. It looks like change is coming. You've outgrown something in the past. You could have outgrown alcoholism. You could have outgrown cigarettes. You could have outgrown the belt in your pants. But so it's time to move on, Scorpio. Not move back. Not say, I'm, I've am i outgrown this bullshit. I'm going to go back to what I used to be. That's not what's happening. That's not outgrowing anything. That's being a gray lizard and slinking into the hole. What you want to do is it's time to move on. Do something good for yourself, and good will be waiting for you. All right, next. Wow, it sounded so hard on Scorpio, and I'm a Scorpio as well. I'm not even doing anything. All right. Sagittarius weekly horoscope. Dear Sagittarius, the sun in Pisces. Okay, now the sun in Pisces is actually going to square your sun. So that's not the greatest thing. <clears throat> but as we're talking about it and as I wrote it, the sun in, dear Sagittarius, the sun in Pisces will shift the attention towards your home and family. Pisces, you're going to spend some time focused on your home. Sorry, Sagittarius, you're going to spend some time focused on your home and family. With the moon also in Scorpio, right? The moon is back here with the moon in Scorpio, Sagittarius. You might be in, so with the moon in Scorpio, you might be in for a reflective and somewhat reclusive week. Got that, Scorp uh, Sag? A ref reclusive and reflective week. You're currently in more of a money cycle rather than a love cycle. But if you're looking, then comfort and security will win hearts. Got that, Sagittarius? Comfort and security will win hearts. This is what's going on. I know you might be thinking, oh, love, sunny, love, sunny, love. Because, like, you know, we're looking for love in the chart here. And, whoa, just remember, Sagittarius, Leo's having problems in relationships. All right, next. So, Sagittarius, uh, this is the money time for you. There's nowhere, like, this is money, money, money. There's a lot of energy in here. It doesn't happen very often. Uh, so, like, now is the time to really get out there and, and push the financial engine right now. Go make the money, go make the money, go to make the money. Soon, love will be there. That's the deal. Unless you have a lot of Capricorn energy, Sagittarius, you should just focus on making money. On top of all, because later on in the week, you know, the moon, the moon is going to cruise through all of this. By the weekend, it's going to be over here. 
By the weekend, you're going to be focused on money. I'm like, this is a money time for Sagittarius. You know, you're low energy, you're behind the scenes, you're working on stuff behind the scenes, you're doing stuff in secret, you're probably going to the gym in secret, you're probably training in secret. There is something sudden and unexpected about to happen to your health in the next two to three months. So watch your health, watch your health, watch your health, and some kind of craziness is going to happen to absolutely disrupt your day, Sagittarius, so watch out for it. There is a, a little bit of a problem in your dating life, right? With Chiron in the fifth house, you're going to have problems in your dating life. But at the same time, if you find the right person, you're going to feel empowered and you're going to feel a lot stronger romantically. There's also a problem, Sagittarius, that some kind of sickness might come to the kids right now. So keep your eyes open for the kids. Absolutely watch out for it. Do your best to be your best. And I think you're going to be awesome. So watch your health in the next couple of months and watch your money. There's also something that's restricting the movements for Sagittarius. So whether you had a car problem or you're like have to wait in line or you need to, um, you know, so some, there's a, a, restriction in, a restriction in movement for Sagittarius. All right, Saggy, next. Nine of coins. So money continues to be good. There you go. Nine of coins. Money continues to be good. You're pretty close to reaching a financial destiny. Watch out for other people, you know, trying to take your money from you. But right now, uh, it looks as if you are close to reaching one of your financial goals. So very, so congratulations, Sagittarius. Then we have the Ace of Wands reversed. So even in spite of all this financial stuff, you know, in spite of money being pretty good, the Ace of Wands is saying, you're putting the brakes on. You're not quite ready to make a breakthrough. You know, there should be a breakthrough. There should be a new relationship. There should be new fun. It's fire, right? There should be new fun, the new some action, new thing, but it's not. Something is holding something back. Whether you're meeting the right person or like you're not ready to do with whatever they want or whatever. There's you don't have the time. Something is happening which is holding off this new relationship thing. And finally, the King of Wands. I'm guessing it's someone from the past. The King of Wands is reverse Sag, so maybe someone from the past. Uh, who is an authority figure or someone who is like a father or a mentor figure in your past, probably they're going to come back into your life and there's a possibility that they're going to be a little bit disruptive and a little bit controlling. But that's about it. Money's good. There's a little bit of a, 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 a slow period starting the new relationships. Like It's probably because you're dealing with someone from the past or some baggage from the past. All right, next. All right, Capricorn, Capricorn Weekly Horoscope. Dear Capricorn, Uranus in the fifth house, Capricorn, Capricorn. <laughs> I like the bug the Capricorns because there's some older Capricorns over in Europe. <laughs> so you guys know who they are. Like, you know, like, so anyways, dear Capricorn, and like, you know, Capricorns over, you know. All right, here we go. Dear Capricorn. Uranus in the fifth house can lead to accidental pregnancies. Ay, 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 ay. Right there, man. It's also approaching the North Node. I think sudden and unexpected accidental pregnancy is on the very near horizon for Capricorn. I really do. The North Node in the fifth, right? The North Node in the fifth right here, it's going to bring transition dharma excuse me, transition, dharma, and destiny to a romantic gesture. There you go, Capricorn. Romance is in the air. Unexpected romance is on the horizon. Next two to three months. Not longer. That's when it is. I'm going to keep talking about it as uh, the time goes through. Okay, put it together, Capricorn, and it looks like you're destined to unexpectedly have children this year. Oh, yeah. It can also mean Taking your romantic life for granted. Capricorns might be taking their romantic life for granted, so be careful. With Venus, Mars, and Pluto all conjunct in the first house, da -na 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 -na. Capricorn, watch out for identity theft. That's right. Your identity is going to change in a major dramatic way uh, in the next week or so. 
uh, up like the very first week of March, Capricorn, your identity is going to come into, under major flux. You're probably going to change, be forced to change your name or you're going to be forced to get a haircut or there's something about you and how you appear to the world that's going to be a forced change. So watch out. So that's what's going on, Capricorn. Let's be very careful because uh, it's definitely on the way. All right, Capricorn, here we go. Let's look at your cards. Capricorn, first up, hey, the star card. So there's hope, you know, whatever you're looking. Well, I don't know, Capricorn. I, as astrologically, I see some kind of identity theft coming or maybe changing your name or maybe some kind of thing is happening where there's, you might be under a cyber attack. Like something's coming up to mess you up, Capricorn. So watch out for it. Then we have the star card. Uh, and, you know, Capricorn, this is a really positive card. There is a change of foot. Whatever negative thing that you may have gone through recently, you're going to be okay. What the star card says, if you stick to your guns and follow your, your uh, plan, everything is going to work out. But keep in mind, with the star card, no one can really see what's going on except you. So, like, keep in mind, keep, just keep that in mind. And then the page of wands, there's a bit of a learning curve here. So maybe there's a new beginning Capricorn or you recently went through some kind of new beginning and you're learning something. You know, make sure you stretch. I know that seems a little weird, but Page of Wands is a physical card. So make sure you stretch Capricorn. Make sure you reach out. Have fun with this new thing, with this new learning curve. You're probably a sponge right now and you're very eager to get out and try new things. So Capricorn, get out and try new things. Like you're going through a change. Finally, the Six of Swords. You are absolutely going through a change. I think Capricorns have already left. I, You know, if they're breaking up or leaving, like Capricorns might be leaving their jobs and getting ready for a new job or they're like getting ready to move or they're checking out or they're redoing their bank statement, like leaving a bank, joining another bank. Something's going on with Capricorn. And there's a major change afoot. Six of Swords says you're just not ready to rock the boat you know just you're on your way out and you're trying to avoid you're just putting in the time right it looks like capricorn's just putting in the time until it's time to leave and that's the action capricorn i wish you the best and i hope it all works out you know enter into the raffle right there's a raffle here on the the sunny side where we're giving i'm um, giving away free mini astrology readings uh, i'm doing past life readings these days i'm doing a lot of past life readings and uh, relationship readings, but I'm giving away mini astrology readings. And all you have to do is leave your birthday in the comments section. Birth date, birth time, and birth city. And you'll be entered into the draw. And the draw happens during the week in the evening when I'm doing the, the live streams. And that's it. All right, next. Aquarius is... Up uh, here we go, here we go. Aquarius weekly horoscope. Dear Aquarius. Oh, that's a typo. Dear Aquarius, Mars and Venus in the twelfth, right in the twelfth house, continues to bring fighting behind the curtains with your closest relationships. This stuff right here. Something, Aquarius, is going to happen behind the scenes. You're probably fighting with someone in secret. It's not as bad as you think it, or as anyone says it is, but I think you're just kind of fed up with something. There's a very big change that's going to happen in secret, uh, Aquarius, So, and the change is going to affect you. It's going to be Venus. It's going to be smooth. And Mars, once again, someone, Aquarius, is going to be very disruptive and controlling of you behind your back you're probably going to get blamed for something you didn't do. Here we go. Mar Aquarius, Mars and Venus in the 12th continues to bring fighting behind the curtains with your closest relationship. Shortly, Pluto will also conjunct Mars and Venus in Capricorn. When that happens, there will be a permanent change in that relationship. So, Aquas, one, be careful of what you wish for, and two, your wishes are coming true. So Aqua, be careful. All that wish, all that nonsense, all that behind-the-scenes stuff is coming true. Like your Venus is there. That's where you're attracting. 
Aquarians might be in a secret relationship right now. They might be in a secret love affair right now. Aquas might have people close to them dying right now. Aquas, might, they're not attracting death like Geminis, but, but Aquas are very close to endings and pain right now. So they're think, they might be thinking of leaving someone, thinking of an ending. They might have headaches. They might be disruptive behind the scenes. It's a tricky scene for Aqua right now. They might be. Anyways, that's what's happening for Aquarius. Uh, and that's the deal. Uh, having said all of that, money should be very, 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 very good for the rest of the year for Aqua. All right. Well, I ended on a good note. Five of Cups reversed. This is going to lead to a little bit of heartbreak, Aqua. Five of Cups reversed. This is not necessarily breakup energy per se, but it is something that's a little bit pessimistic. You're going to think and feel it's like the end of the world or something is upsetting you, Aqua, and there's nothing that you can do about it. You want a little bit of help. You need a little bit of help. You want to be... Um, you want to be optimistic about everything but the fives make it but reversed it makes it very difficult for you to be optimistic especially as far as your love life is concerned then we have the king of swords so this guy is a highly 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 cerebral guy he's the smartest guy in the entire uh, the entire tarot and it means you have to figure it out aquarius is really smart as well this is actually Gemini energy, but where's the King of Swords? It's actually Gemini energy, but Aquarians are really smart as well. So Aqua, you know, you're going to have to brain it out. Whatever's going on, you're going to have to figure it out. King of Swords, figure it out. Don't overly rely on your intuition. Don't overly wait for things to happen. You're going to have to think about it, figure it out. And finally, the Emperor reversed. So Aquarius, with the Emperor reversed, it means you're not going to be able to take control of the situation. I know the Emperor, you want to take control of the situation. Uh, it's an honest, it's a fair kind of situation, a fair card, but it's reversed. So you're not necessarily going to be able to do it. So you're just going to have to chill out. Aquarius, you're just going to have to chill out, do your thing, take it one step at a time, and you're going to have to wait. For this uh, tough transit to pass in you know in the middle uh, in, in not too distant future after you we go through this breakup behind the scenes everything is going to pour into your first house Aquarius and when Mars and Venus enter into your first house you'll you'll look a lot better you might get headaches nosebleeds you might bump your head but Venus is going to be there and you'll be looking really good and you'll be attracting so things are going to be get a lot better you just have to make it through the next two weeks and things are going to finally be a lot better. All right, next, Pisces Weekly Horoscope. Dearest Pisces. In it, okay, and so hey guys, in an attempt to speed up the horoscopes, I decided to be a little less cryptic for Pisces right now. So here we go. Pisces, dearest Pisces, here we go. Venus in the 11th house makes it a very good week to make money and or make love with one of your friends. Got that, Pisces? There you go. I'll say it again. Venus in the 11th house makes it a very good week for Pisces to make money and or to make love with one of your friends. On the downside, Mars is also in the 11th house, indicating that you might actually be sleeping with the boyfriend of one of your friends. And they are about to find out. So there you go. Soon, so you're going to be, it's time, Pisces, for a friends into lovers transit to start dating one of your friends, maybe. But Mars there is also causing problems and friction. So you got to be careful with it. I have priestess saying, yeah, let's just concentrate on the sun and Venus. <laughs> no, you got to, you got to, that's what you got to do. Anyways, let me get back to it. So, Anyways, money is also coming from social networking. So a little bit of hate from social networking, a little bit of money for social networking. All right. On the downside, Mars is also in the 11th house, indicating that you might cause problems with relationships. Soon, 
Now here's where it gets interesting. Soon, both Mars and Venus, right? Mars and Venus will conjunct Pluto in the 11th house, indicating the end of a friendship. Everybody got that? It indicates the end of a friendship. It also indicates the end of a, um, you know, of a association with a group of friends or some kind of fighting on social media. Or maybe you're going to meet a guy online, right? The 11th house. So Pisces, it can indicate, it indicates a change in a relationship uh, with groups of people or like with someone, friends or something. So friends and the lovers, uh, meeting someone online and your social luck is about to go through a transition right now. You might have fight with a group, you might let go of someone, but you'll probably meet some new people in the same uh, same situation. What's that, Scorps? All right, Pisces, before we book out, remember, all in all, okay, Pisces, all in all, be careful because the energy moves in both directions, right? It's reports in both directions. So, so although, right, I was having fun with these horoscopes, remember, in reverse, okay, Pisces, it means that you should watch out for betrayals from friends. Pisces, watch out for betrayals from friends. And there you go. All right, let's read the Torah. <laughs> let's read the Torah and get on with it. So Pisces, love from your friends, right? But also... There's a possibility of betrayal from your friends. All right, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. Pisces, here we go, here we go, here we go. Whoa, Pisces, Eight of Cups, someone's checking out. Eight of Cups, someone's not happy. Uh, it's the card of leaving, right? It's looking for another muse. Uh, so... Pisces, this is like some, it's time to move on. I'm not saying anything, you know, but like I'm just saying Pisces, Eight of Cups says uh, emotionally unsatisfied, time to move on. This is Pisces energy too. So this is a very Pisces kind of vibe, searching for new inspiration. Then we have the star card. There is hope. There's hope. There's promise. There's a light in the distance and things are are absolutely going to work out. It absolutely going to work out for you. All Pisces. You know, there are a lot of Pisces here on the channel. So the star card Pisces, you should have a lot of hope. So although you're leaving or someone's leaving or someone's moody, someone's looking for something else, the star card says you're going to be okay. There's a lot of promise here, Pisces. And finally, you have the king of swords as well. So just like uh, the last reading, you're going to have to figure it out. Uh, but, it, but it shouldn't be too difficult to figure it out. It's the King of Swords. It's not like you're filled with questions. The King of Swords is more along the lines of going after answers. So that's it, Pisces. Uh, someone's checking out, but there's a lot of hope. There's an, whoops, there's an absolute path for you to take, right? The star, there's a light in the distance. And the King of Swords says, just go do it. You're going to be fine. Don't worry about anything. Just be fine. All right, and finally, that brings us back to do, 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 this weekend's Lucky and Money. First, we're going to do Lucky in the Lottery. And we all know I like to look at Jupiter making an aspect uh, to be Lucky in the Lottery. And it looks like the water signs. So Lucky in the Lottery are going to be Scorpio, Cancer, and Pisces. These guys are lucky in the lottery. These guys should buy lottery tickets. As far as lucky in love is concerned, this week, who's lucky in love? Oh, look at that. Scorpio and Taurus. There we go. Lucky in love. Scorpio and Taurus with Capricorn and Cancer heating up fast. Well, there you go. Capricorn and Cancer. So this weekend, lucky in the lottery, Scorpio, Cancer, and Pisces are lucky in lottery. And this week's lucky in love signs are Scorpio and Taurus 
for the first half of the week. In the second half of the week, it's going to be Sagittarius and Gemini. But for the first half of the week, Scorpio and Taurus with Capricorn and Cancer heating up fast. <laughs> Woo! As for everyone else, it'll be a super amazing, fantastic week. And pick up the check, yo. From the sunny side.net, I'm Sunny reminding everybody to subscribe to the channel, everybody to share the video. When it, you know, when the video comes out, share the video. Also, uh, leave your birth date in the comment section if you want to be entered into the draw to potentially win a free mini astrology reading right here live on the channel. I'm not giving away the past life readings yet because, you know, like that – to find someone who knows how to actually do past life astrology is, is rare. So I'm not going to, you know, I already make it cheap enough for you guys. So that's not being given away and not compatibility readings because they take too long to do. And that's the deal. Or they like take too long to put all the energy uh, information in. Uh, but the mini astrology readings, they're going to, they're going on sale. They're good, not on sale, but I'm raffling them away. And that's the action, guys. I wish everyone has a super amazing day. And everything is really cool. From the sunny side, Don Adam Center, wishing everyone the best, beautiful week. And I'll see you guys soon. Hey, we made it. We made it to the end of the horoscopes. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> Thank God. Four hours. Well, we goofed around for an hour. We did a lot of readings tonight for the horoscope.